Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 150, the first news show of 2023. Hope you all had a great new year and are ready for 2023, because we could see Tesla stock make a big rebound here in 2023 as Tesla is dominating in the European EV sales, even beating the entire group like Stellantis. Tesla hits a new record in the 4680 sale production, and the Volkswagen Wolfberg plant is running at half production capacity because of flat-out chaos, as Volkswagen put it themselves. As the land is continues to be all over the place, now they want to invest in hydrogen cars as well. And Volkswagen CEO Bloomer continues to make a fool of himself. And Wall Street Journal makes false claims about electric cars. And the Model Y beats the Volkswagen Golf in Europe in November as the best selling car of any kind. All of this and much, much more on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. Let's start by taking a look at Tesla's stock and the total detachment from Tesla's performance it has become. So the crazy thing is that Tesla's stock had the worst month ever, the worst quarter ever, and the worst year ever, while Tesla, the company, just had the best quarter ever and the best year ever. Yes, short term, the stock market just doesn't make any sense. But luckily, most of us are long term investors in Tesla, so I only see this as a great discount and I have bought a little more stock. Ark Invest did not just buy a little more stock, they bought an additional more than 25,000 shares. Boy, I would love that I had enough money to buy 25,000 shares of Tesla at this great discount. So Ark Invest is still loading up on Tesla stock and of course, I might add, as nothing fundamental about Tesla has changed. They have grown something like 45% in deliveries in 2022, still waiting on the numbers tomorrow, hopefully, and production has grown something like 50%. And now we see that their energy storage business is about to ramp up to highs we have never seen before, starting to actually earn Tesla some money. And in 2023, probably billions of dollars in profits, so that is awesome. At the same time, we have the Tesla Berlin factory ramping up to real high volumes this year, together with the Texas factory. And then we are going to get the Cybertruck coming out as well. And as I made some videos about, the truck is going to fly off the assembly line when they get that tuned in, as it is designed to be easy and fast to produce with no paint job and so on. And we should see some of all the benefits of the wide release of the full self-driving beta program, which has now jumped up to 285 a thousand beta testers. Just let that sink in for a second. In September 2021, they were only about 2,000 beta testers. And now they are closing in on 150 times as many. Just imagine the amount of data Tesla will start collecting now compared to a year ago. And how fast the beta program learned through 2022. And that will just hundredfold now. Implications not understood. So we have a lot of great catalyst coming here in 2023 that should no doubt be pushing the stock back up again. This is of course not financial advice, but no wonder that Tesla has seen some of the highest volume of trading days ever here in December, since it has been a long time so you can get in on it at this low of a price. And we are still having a lot of growth to come here in 2023 as demand is not an issue. There might be something going on in China with the recession or whatever, but other than that, 
Tesla's demand is strong all over the world. Remember, you still can't even order a Tesla Model 3 in the US today. And in 2023, many of Tesla's Model Y and 3s will get a $7,500 tax credit. So that should make the demand even stronger, as we also got to see this week which vehicles qualify for the EV tax credit. But this is not the first time people started panicking about Tesla's demand problem. Remember, back in the beginning of 2019, many so-called analysts said that Tesla had peaked and demand was falling off a cliff. <laughs> but since then, Tesla has gone up from about 245,000 units delivered in 2018 to about 1.35 million in 2022. So those comments did not age very well. And I don't think the comments about Tesla's demand problem now will age very well either. Just because we see a few weeks in the Chinese market where demand may not be as strong as Tesla was hoping for. But we do see Chinese new energy vehicles not growing here at the end of the year. So maybe there is more going on in China than just Tesla's demand is falling. And again, Tesla has a lot of levers they can pull in 2023 if they need more demand. We know Tesla will shut down the factory at the Chinese New Year from the 20th to 31th of December. So January will be a smaller number in production than we are used to. But it is still very exciting to see how many sales will go into China domestically in Q1 and also get the Q4 numbers hopefully tomorrow. But here in Europe, there is no sign of any demand issues or other problems for Tesla. It is just full steam ahead, leading the race. Tesla reached a new milestone in Norway, the EV capital of the world, as Tesla delivered its 100,000th Tesla in Little Norway. And the Tesla Model Y became the best-selling EV in Norway. But that does not come as a surprise, as the Model Y did become the best-selling EV in Europe by a long shot. We don't have all the numbers yet, but we are closing in on 100,000 Model Ys delivered in Europe in 2022. That is just pure domination. That one car model has sold more units in Europe than all of BMW's 12 models combined, or Audi, or Mercedes, or any other car brand. Only Volkswagen as a brand sells more units combined with all its models than what Tesla did with their Model Y. But only just. As we do see, Volkswagen is actually struggling a bit with their production or demand, you decide, but they don't seem to be growing as a brand in 2022 in Europe. That is scary as EV has grown a lot this year, but the Volkswagen brand seems to be shrinking in 2022 in Europe. As last year, they sold 160,770 units and today still with numbers missing, but they are only at 117,000 units. So they will not get close to beating their old standing record here in Europe, but Tesla will, as the last numbers are taking in over the next couple of months from the rest of the countries. So it looks like Tesla will end 2022 off with something about 14% EV market share in Europe compared to 13.8% in 2021. So Tesla gained market share in the EV race in Europe with more than 300 different models to choose from. So guess Gordon Johnson and many of the so-called analysts were wrong once again, as Tesla did not get beaten down because of all the competition that was coming out in Europe. Tesla grew and even managed to keep its market share of about 14%. Just very, very impressive. Tesla as a brand even beat the group Stellantis in Europe in 2022. So I guess for Stellantis' goal of beating both Tesla and Volkswagen in selling EVs in Europe has faded away as Tesla's Berlin factory in 2023 will produce more EVs on its own than what Stellantis will produce and deliver in Europe. That is my bet. And they are already working on expansion at the Berlin factory. It is only Volkswagen as a group that is able to beat 
Tesla the brand. Very impressive. Even in Germany, Tesla is the best-selling EV brand and have the two best-selling models, beating the Germans at their own game in their home turf. Ouch. And not only that, the Tesla Model Y also beat the Volkswagen Golf in Europe in November to become the best-selling car of any kind, just as it did in September. Looks like the Model Y is quickly becoming the new people's wagon. Tesla sold 19,144 Model Ys in Europe in November, representing a gain of more than 260% year over year. Clearly, Tesla is having huge demand problem. It's clear for everyone. <laughs> and in the UK, Tesla is just even more dominating. I think most automakers would love to have Tesla's demand problem here, leaving everyone else in the dust. And we get some more example of just how far ahead Tesla is when it comes to charging. Tesla is really the only one that has the full package. And Kyle Connor was having trouble with Electrify America chargers again. That just didn't work, and they had two chargers with the same stall number, so they couldn't use both of them at the same time. I mean, come on, Electrify America, you really need to do better than this. And uh, I just can't believe there's two number threes, so you can't charge on that charger at the same time you're charging on this because then you end in an endless loop and we've had that happen. And all I needed to do was just put some energy into this car so I can get to the airport and get the hell out of Florida because I'm tired of dealing with their charging problems here. But as you can see here, it is not just Kyle that I experience in trouble with Electrify America Chargers. As Long wrote on Twitter, a study in contrast, four port Electrify America site, one broken and the rest won't go over 35 kilowatts. Right across the parking lot, 16 port Tesla version 3 supercharger, all working according to PlugShare, max output 250 kilowatts. Yeah, even Sandy Monroe tuned into this one and said, this is what will kill all EV car companies except Tesla. <laughs> exactly. Just like the experience I have talked about before where a Mercedes EQS owner that had paid more than $200,000 for his car wanted to sell it again and get a Tesla because he had this exact experience. An Electrify America charger didn't work and once he found one that did work, it would only give him 50 kilowatts. So it took a long time to charge his very big battery. As more and more people experience this, more and more people will simply just choose a Tesla over the competition because with the Tesla you will get the whole package as I talked about in my Plaid Model S video. In the old days it was all about the car, nothing else. You didn't talk about how long it took to fill up your ice cars or how many gas stations did you have access to. <laughs> but in the new EV world these things matter almost as much as the car itself. We continue to see the others not really able to deliver the experience you want as an EV owner. But Tesla delivers all the time and is rapidly expanding the charging network just as Tesla celebrated their number 10,000 supercharger installed in mainland China. That all has an uptime of 99.96% and Tesla is about to take this to a whole new level with their version 4 superchargers that can deliver more than 1,000 kilowatts in charging speed. Tesla's charging network is even more in front of the competition than their electric cars and they will start to pull even further away with units as well. As here in Denmark, for example, in 2022, Tesla increased their charges with about 80% in the country as they just opened another 24 stall 250 kilowatt supercharger station in Kiplew. But they expect to double the amount of charges within the next 12 to 18 months and will focus on bigger charging stations with more units per station. So that is very, very nice as they also continue to open up the charging network to more and more non-Teslas. In Denmark, now 85% of Tesla's charges are open to other EVs. So a lot more is coming. They will continue to increase their charges as the fleet of EVs are growing rapidly. 
What a year it has been. But people tend to forget all the good that Tesla has done this year because the stock is down. As CNBS writes, worst year for Tesla. Uh, no, 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 my stupid friends. The worst year for Tesla stock ever, not Tesla. They have had a great year, even with all these headwinds. Let's just remember, they started production from three new factories this year, Lethrop, Texas and Berlin. Some people even wrote to me at the end of 2021, the Berlin factory would never start production because of German's red tape and blah, 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 blah. But it did. Yeah, but it did not ramp up as fast as you thought. Nope, but let's just put that into a little context because the Berlin factory started production in April, a real production in May. But anyway, the factory will have produced and delivered something like more than 50,000 units in 2022. Do you remember all the headlines back in March? as GM started production of their Cadillac Lyric. The competition was coming for Tesla. How many have they delivered? Exactly, nothing. They have been in production longer, but have not delivered anything yet because of trouble with their driver assist software. So again, yes, GM is having huge trouble, but Tesla is actually ramping up. Maybe not as quick as we hoped, but it is way out in front of everyone else trying to ramp up EV production. Only BYD can keep up and have actually ramped up quicker in 2022 than Tesla when it comes to units. But everyone else is just talk no action and the Texas factory has already overtaken the Berlin factory in production rate. I will bet you that the Texas factory alone will produce more EVs in 2023 than Ford will do combined. So I think people are forgetting just how huge these two factories coming online are. The Berlin factory will make sure Tesla will dominate the European car market long term as I made a whole video about, and the Texas factory will do the same for Tesla in the US. Then we also had Tesla out saying that they were no longer battery constrained. So people seem to forget the implication of this and why Tesla is now ramping up the battery storage business with their mega pack factory in Lathrop. The implication of this will become very clear in 2023, as Elon also said in the Twitter space last week that there is basically unlimited demand for Tesla's mega packs. But that was started in 2022 as well with Tesla's new factory coming online. And we also got the Tesla semi-truck in 2022 that they have now delivered to Pepsi and showed the world and the doubters that the Tesla semi-truck could do what Daimler and many others said was impossible. Don't think people really get the implication of this truck either, but that will become much clearer in 2023 as they ramp up production of this monster of a truck. And we will get some more details about it like price and weight and daily user experience from Pepsi. And Tesla grew about 50% in 2022. Even with COVID lockdown, supply chain issue, war in Europe and much more, Tesla still grew almost 50%. The stock might be down, but Tesla, the company, has never looked stronger and will get to look even stronger in 2023 as most other automakers will struggle with their falling ice sales and a recession that might kick in while Tesla will just continue to scale up even if they have to sell their cars at a loss as they will just earn money on their storage business now. And of course, they can earn back the losses on their cars with software later. Tesla is in such a strong position going into a recession with practically no long-term debt, $24 billion in the bank, and will still be able to ramp up production while the others will look very weak with collapsing ice sales, mountains of debt and huge losses during the recession. This could break some of them, but Tesla is too strong to be broken now. They have more cash on hand than what is needed to go through a whole year without selling a single vehicle. But I think the timing of the energy business ramping up is going to be the perfect timing for the recession. 
as that is more for the utility companies and they will still want to put up these huge batteries as it will save them money and pay themselves off in only a couple of years as we have seen countless of example of. So 2023 could become an even more crazy year than 2022, but a good and exciting year for Tesla, as we will also get to see the Cybertruck in the hands of customers. And Tesla will quickly be able to produce more Cybertrucks than Ford can produce F-150 Lightnings, as the production speed of the Cybertruck is going to be much faster than the F-150, and that will really be a pivotal moment in history. That we will probably get to see next year. So yeah, 2022 was records all around, record sales, record profit, record production, record energy deployment, record beta testers, record margins, but also records down for the stock in a single year. Yes, 2022 did not make a lot of sense between the stock price and the future potential growth of the company, but I think 2023 will correct that. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla shorts. And Tesla announced that the Tesla RAM of the 4680 sale is doing very well. And they just hit a production of 868,000 sales in a week, enough to about 1,000 cars. And Alex shared that his prediction tracker here is actually quite accurate. So we are probably going to see a big ramp here in 2023, which would line up perfectly with the Cybertruck starting production in mid-2023. So everything is lining up for an awesome 2023. And speaking of 2023 and how everything is lining up, Elon also reacted to this tweet. What happens when Tesla print a $4 billion free cash flow quarter and net cash on balance sheet swell to nearly $24 billion on January 25th? That's at least three years of cash runway entering a recession, assuming zero sales and zero layoff. Exactly. As Elon also replied with a little thinking emoji. And Seeker says it has met its 2022 delivery target of 70,000 units. So that is very nice to see that they have been ramping up for the last half year of 2022 because the Seeker 1 really seems like a very nice electric car. And SpaceX did make a couple of launches this week getting to the target of 60 launches in 2022. The last launch was their launch number 61, so almost doubling their launches from 2021, where they did make 31 launches. That also means that SpaceX has tied a 42-year-old record with its 61st and final Falcon rocket launch of 2022, a record that the Soviet Union set in 1980, where they launched the R-7 rocket successfully 61 times. I have a feeling that SpaceX will beat that record in 2023, hopefully including a launch of their Starship that we unfortunately did not get to see fly in 2022. And Volkswagen's new CEO Bloomer continues to make a fool of himself. As he said, e-fuels can be used to power combustion engines in a virtually CO2 neutral manner and are in demand worldwide. They still pollute the air we breathe, so no thank you, Bloomer. The Volkswagen Group is cancelling all their plans to phase out the ICE cars. As he continued, our strategy is to leave the internal combustion engine in the market for the time being because they are very popular in many regions of the world. Oh my god, please bring Herbert Dees back. At least Volkswagen was heading in the right direction under his lead. Now Bloomer is changing Volkswagen cars directly for the iceberg. And Stellantis is out saying stupid things as well. They are not convinced that pure EVs are the future. So Stellantis has announced they have entered into exclusive negotiations and intend to become a significant stockholder in the French hydrogen fuel cell company Symbio. So Stellantis is now investing in hydrogen cars. You got to be kidding me. Maybe this is because they couldn't beat Tesla the brand in EVs in Europe that they are thinking, let's invest in the more expensive technology that has already lost the race. This is so embarrassing that the leader of this huge company can't see what's going on or understand how bad an idea 
fuel cell cars are. If you have not seen my video about this, you should definitely check that one out and maybe share it with Stellantis CEO if you know him, because he's just like Bloomer setting the course for the iceberg. And Volkswagen's brand chief, Thomas Schafter, said that the company's Wolfburg plant is building well under 400,000 cars a year, less than half its capacity because of flat out chaos in the supply chain. As he puts it, the big mighty Wolfburg factory is brought to its knees, producing half of its capacity and no one is really reporting on this but that Tesla Shanghai's might halt production for a week because of the Chinese New Year or whatever will make headlines around the world. Well that factory will probably end off 2022 with the production of about 700 to 750 thousand units. Yeah, how people can look at this information and then come to the conclusion that it is Tesla that has demand problem is just beyond my understanding. And we get to see people driving a Tesla in Grand Theft Auto while playing it in a Tesla. Now that's just cool. And Matthias shared a chart showing just how much materials in batteries has come down. So that is very good to see, as this will only help everyone to get the prices of the EVs down even further. And the Wall Street Journal made an article saying that Teslas could take up to three times longer to charge in cold weather and range drop 54%. This is just BS. I made a whole series on this, driving up through Norway and Sweden in temperatures as low as minus 16 degrees. And I could still get my car to charge with over 200 kilowatts, as long as you let the car know you're going to a charger so it preheats the battery. There was absolutely no problem. But maybe the journalist didn't know that the Tesla can preheat the battery. And on my road trip around Norway and Sweden, my Tesla only dropped about 20% in range. And I just reported on last week that Recurrent conducted a study of 14 of the most popular EV models in cold weather and Tesla only lost 15%. So how Wall Street Journal can come to the conclusion that they lose 54% and cannot charge in cold weather only shows how little they know about the matter. I will leave a link down below to my little study of my Tesla in cold weather, my little extreme road trip in Norway. So if anyone knows anyone at the Wall Street Journal, you can send them the link as well so they can learn a thing or two about electric cars because this was just embarrassingly bad journalism. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my newest patrons and members of this YouTube channel. My new patron producers are Brian Dawning, Tim Smith, Robert Truly, and Brian Henry. And my new members, Chris Wood, Ken Yashinki, and Hokan Peterson. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And a big and special thanks to Supporto of the Week. And this week's winner is Kylie Sloan. He has been a cyber patron of mine for over two years. Thank you so much for all your support. I will contact you on Patreon. In the meantime, go check out the merch store and find the free t-shirt or mock of your choice. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. We know that the robots are coming, stealing our jobs. But now the cat has just realized it as well. That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot so others can find it. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one in all of 2023. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. 
Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.